be subject to civil authorities. We studied one verse, and it was Romans chapter 3, 13, verse 1, and it said we must be subject to those who have authority over us. Why? Why should we be subject to them? Well, God has given them authority. There's no one that has authority that God did not give it to them. All who have authority, God gave it to them. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Now, let's go on to verse 2, the first part of verse 2. Paul is saying, therefore, whoever resists the person who has authority, they are resisting the authority that God established. Let me explain. If you resist their authority, you're resisting God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. Question. Why did Paul write chapter 13, send it to the Christians in, in Rome, and tell them, you must be subject to the Roman authorities? Why? Well, at that time, the ruler, he was an emperor of all of the empire of Rome. Why did Paul tell them this, to be subject to them, him? Well, the answer is because many early Christians at this time of Paul's writing, they misunderstood something that Paul was teaching about salvation in Christ. Well, they thought that salvation in Christ meant that they were not under the civil authorities. That's what they thought. But freedom in Christ that Paul was writing about meant that they were free from the slavery of sin. They were not under the hold that sin had on them. They thought it meant they were no longer oppressed by the authorities. And that's not what it meant. Paul explained to them, no, you are still under civil authorities. And there's another reason that Paul wrote about this, and it was in chapter 12. It says that we are not to get even with our enemies. No, God will avenge us. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. God promised that he would avenge our enemies. This excludes evil authorities. God will avenge us. And they're thinking, God will avenge us later. Well, you know, what about, that's later, you know, that God's going to avenge the evil authorities. But what's that mean about the justice system now? It's not good. And they felt they can't depend on the justice system. They thought we have to resist them. Now Paul, he wrote to these ancient Christians and he said, no, you do not resist. You submit to these authorities. Now, number two, Paul also said you must honor them. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. You know, they had criminals during that time, people who broke the law. These, these were bad people. And well, what did they do? Well, the authorities would judge them and they would punish them. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Now, if the authorities, you know, if there were no authorities, no one to rule... Well, the crime weight would go sky high. It would be much worse. Let's look at the next part of verse 2. And those who resist will incur judgment. Well, you know, there are authorities out there who are evil. But they still take care of the people who break the law. I want to inform you there's some biblical scholars who think the word judgment in that verse refers to God's judgment and not to the people in authority. So in the verse, is this judgment God's judgment or is it the people's 
It's not clear. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. That verse, it says to be subject. That means to be willing to be under the authority. Yes, ready to obey. But that does not mean blind obedience, blindly obeying, obeying, no matter what. No. We are willing to obey except when something that God's command commands from the Bible goes in uh, against the law that the person is commanding. And we do not do that. Now, it's not easy to, to judge. It's kind of awkward on this to know exactly what to do. Sometimes you have to discuss a lot.